Hi, everybody. Welcome to our live sewing event. I'm Brenda KV Anderson, and today I am going to teach you how to make the woolly mittens. So this is what they look like. Let's just do a little show and tell here. These mittens uh, that I designed are made with repurposed sweaters. So um, wool or cashmere or alpaca sweaters and felted, and then you cut the fabric out of the felted fabric and sew them together. And they feature this really nice little area for your finger to stick out. Um, so you can do texting outside when you are freezing, right? So you can keep your hands nice and warm. You don't get cold. Um, so first, let's talk about how to get these sweaters, okay? So I, what I did was I just went shopping at the thrift stores, went to the Goodwill, and went searching through the, um, you know, the sweater racks. And here's a tip, go to the biggest size first <laughs> because you get the most yardage, right? The most bang for your buck. Um, or maybe you're lucky enough or unlucky enough to have accidentally washed one of your sweaters, one of your wool sweaters, and it shrank and it doesn't fit anymore. Or you know somebody who has, or if you had a little moth problem and there were some holes in the sweater and you don't want to repair it. There are lots of different places to get these um, sweaters from. And I love it because you are basically saving these things from the landfill and making something really beautiful out of it. So when you're shopping at the store, if you, if you decide to go to the store, or if you're looking through your closet, make sure that you are getting sweaters that are 100% or like 98% at least, um, wool or alpaca or cashmere or something that is going to felt. It, it, make sure you look at the care label and if it says something like machine wash, you, you won't, it won't felt and, and you won't be able to use those kinds of sweaters. Um, you know, it probably will say hand wash or dry clean only or something like that on the label. So once you find your sweaters, um, and probably you can get a pair of mittens out of one, I mean, it really depends on what you find, but probably you can get a pair of mittens out of one sweater. But sometimes you'll have sweaters that shrink a lot in the laundry, like this sweater right here. This is a women's size medium. Obviously it's missing the arms because I cut those off. Um, and use them in one of my projects. But, you know, I just wanted to give you an idea how much things can shrink in, in the washing machine. So, and you don't really have a ton of control over how much it shrinks. You can keep checking in the wash as you go, so you can stop it before it gets too tiny to use. But um, I would recommend getting at least two sweaters just so that you know for sure you're gonna have enough uh, yardage. So as far as the felting procedure goes, you if you've never felt it before, it's super easy. You just have to put your sweaters in the wash. If there's zippers on them, cut the, just cut the zippers off. Don't worry about things unraveling. They shouldn't unravel unless it's a really, really loose knit or something. Um, and then you just toss them in the wash and wash them on hot. Do exactly what you're not supposed to do to these sweaters to get them to shrink up. And uh, you can put detergent in if you want. You don't have to. It, to me, it made no difference. I did this many, many times, and it doesn't seem to really make a difference. Um, so if you're washing something else along with it, which actually you should, um, if you're having trouble with it agitating enough to get your fabric to felt enough, you can throw some old jeans in there and make them agitate the most. Um, when felting, when, when wool is in the washing machine, the warmth of it, the heat, um, and also the water and also the act of friction, you know, the pieces rubbing against each other in the, in the wash, that is what's going to make all the little scales on the wool start clinging to each other and getting tighter and tighter and making it felt. And when you're, when you're felting these, you're gonna felt them until you can either no longer see any of the stitches, you should not be able to see like the little knit, separate knit stitches or um, sometimes it won't felt that far and like for example I don't know if you can see this on the camera but I can still see the stitches a little bit actually maybe here's a better example um, here we go you can see that there's texture there's the, these little stripes in it. You can still see the stitches somewhat, but they have been felted enough um, that they're not gonna unravel. And the way that you know that if, if you just make a tiny little cut with your scissors and try to unravel it and it doesn't unravel, then you're good to go. If you are planning on ever washing these mittens in the washing machine to clean them, then you need to felt them until they do not shrink anymore, 
like you can map out a little square and wash it and wash it. You know, you can use safety pins to measure out, you know, four by four inch square or something like that. Um, and at, when it's getting close to the end of felting and after it stops shrinking, then that will be the point at which you'd be able to machine wash these mittens because it's not really going to shrink much more than that or if any at all. Um, otherwise, you can just hand wash them or, um, you know, just spot clean them if you need to. So once you have felted your fabric, um, let it just, just, you can either let it air dry, you can also throw it in the dryer if you want to. And actually the dryer, going back and forth between the washer and the dryer a few times can help felt things a little faster sometimes. Um, it just depends on the, the fiber and the, the way it was made. It's, it's, it's not a one size fits all instructions here, really. You just have to experiment and then felt it enough, wash it enough times until it, you know, no longer frays. But um, once you're done, you can just let it air dry or you can throw it in the, in the dryer. You can also steam it with an iron. Don't, don't put the iron actually on it. Like if it comes out very wrinkly, you can steam it with an iron up above and just sort of pad all the wrinkles out. That works just fine. So you'll get your yardage or your sweaters and you can cut along some of the seam lines to open up the arms. Like cut along the underarm seam of the sweater, cut along the side seams if there are any um, to give yourself just one layer to work with because sometimes it can get really thick. Then you are going to, um, well you'll need to print out your pattern. So there are instructions in your pattern that will explain to you what uh, percentage to print it out to. So it depends on the size that you're making. So make sure that when you're printing it, you go to the little box and click, you know, the, per the correct, per you have to type the correct percentage that you need um, for the correct size. If you just print this out straight without um, altering the percentage that it prints out at, it will print out at a women's medium. So that will be like the standard size. If you just print it out, it should be that. And once you print it out, take a look at this little pattern here. This, I. I know that sometimes it can be frustrating because sometimes printers will just seemingly decide to sort of scale it a little bit to make it fit on the page or have a border or things like that. And I wanted to have a way so that you can check and make sure that it's the correct size before you actually cut your fabric out. So I drew this little red line on the pattern. So if you measure that from one point to the other and check down here for the correct size, it'll tell you if it printed out to the correct size. So once you get your pattern printed out, you can cut all the pieces out. When you have pattern pieces like this with that little box, you're going to cut that box out. Also this, this is called the finger exit piece. You're going to cut that box out as well because we're going to use that to mark our pieces. So what I use when I am working with something that is thick and you're not, it's not going to show through and it's somewhat fuzzy, I oftentimes will use Sharpies to mark those things because a lot of times the, the normal things that we use to mark our fabrics don't actually work very well. Um, <clears throat> some fabric markers will work okay on the lighter colored things, but I don't know. I don't know about you, but when I went to the store, I found almost all gray sweaters. There were like a million wool gray sweaters and it was hard for me to find a lot of colors. So, you know, if you find something that's dark, I wanted to make sure that you knew you could use a silver Sharpie to mark the dark things. So, let's see, I've already marked my pieces. And um, in the pattern, I mentioned you can either clip where your notches are here, um, do a little tiny clip so that you know where your notches are, or you can mark those with the Sharpie if you'd rather. Just make sure you don't clip into past the, where the seam allowance would be. So here's the little finger exit piece. I'm just gonna show you how I mark this with the Sharpie. Just trace inside that box like that. And then there you have it, your little marking. So you'll cut out all of your pieces and you're gonna make sure that you have, right now what I'm showing you here, what I have is the mate to this mitten. So I cut out both sides of my mitten already and I made one mitten so we could refer to that. And then these are all the parts that we need for the second mitten, okay? So for each pair of mittens, you need to have two of the backs of the hands, two of the linings of the backs of the hands, okay? So that's gonna go on the inside of your mitten. Two of the, the palms of the hands and two of the, of the linings of the palms of the hands, you're gonna have two finger exit pieces. There's no lining for that. 
and you're gonna have two heel of the hands um, for the outside and two lining pieces for the heel of the hands. Then there's also a little note on your pattern explaining how to cut, or giving you lengths rather, um, to cut your ribbing to. So on my mittens, the ones that we're making here, these have a nice long folded cuff. I was able to find, um, I, I felted up this really nice cashmere sweater um, that had holes in it. I felt like I rescued it and it's kind of amazing. It's so soft and it had a turtleneck on it. So I was able to use this very long piece and it still remained extremely stretchy, which was lucky because sometimes after it felt it doesn't remain so stretchy. Um, so that's what I'm going to be using on my piece. And so in the little box, I say you should have about, for this particular size, it should be about an eight inch wide piece of ribbing, but I have more like a six inch wide, but that's because I know it'll stretch enough. It's very stretchy. I have made a lot of these and I have found that a lot of the sweaters don't really stretch that much. Here's a piece of ribbing. This is a cuff from another sweater. See how it stretches just a little, like I'm pulling pretty hard. You know, so this cutting out your ribbing piece you will want that piece um, to be a little bit smaller than your mitten, ideally, so that it kind of pulls in here. And the guide that I have listed on the pattern should help you get the correct size. But if you find something like this and you think, oh, I wish it was just a little bit bigger, you can just check it by pulling it into a tube and putting your hand through there to see if it'll stretch enough for your hand to get through. So this is not so much a science for the ribbing. It's a little more of an art. Um, but I wanted to give you some options because sometimes your sweater has a turtleneck, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it has long cuffs and you can just seam your cuff right here, just cut off part of it. Sometimes you can use the bottom ribbing piece from your sweater. Um, sometimes it doesn't have any ribbing at all, which is totally fine. You don't have to put any ribbing on these mittens, um, but if you wanted to, you could just use a piece of the fabric instead. You could just use a piece of maybe one of the stretchier sweaters that you have. You can fold it in half um, like that to make your own ribbing, as long as it stretches enough to be able to get your hand through. So those are some options for the ribbing. Um, I've got all my pieces cut out and marked already. And enough talk, right? We need some sewing action here. So I'm gonna start with the finger exit piece. That's this piece here. And we're gonna begin by adding a little bit of elastic along the edge. We're gonna be putting it along this edge right here. And we're just gonna do that by using a zigzag. So I, I happen to have a heavy duty sewing machine, but you don't need to have a heavy duty sewing machine. I actually developed this pattern and did the prototypes on my mom's old 1960s Elma. Um, which is a sewing machine I love, um, and it did just fine. It doesn't have a super high clearance here, and you know, it's a great old metal machine, which is nice, but it isn't necessarily like super heavy duty, so you don't have to have a heavy duty machine. If you do have a machine that has a walking foot though, that would be extra helpful. All right, so I'm gonna put this on a zigzag, kind of like a medium, medium width zigzag. You want your zigzag to go, you know, cover up a lot of the, of the elastic, I'm gonna go back tack a little here. And I like to pull on my elastic just a little bit so it doesn't get stretched out as I'm laying it down. And you can certainly pin this on there if you like. It's just such a small space that I usually just avoid the pins. But if you're newer at sewing, I would recommend um, giving it at least one or two pins there. So we're gonna just cut that off here and cut that off there. And it's okay if it curls a little bit. You just don't want it to be stretched out. You don't want it. The whole purpose of this elastic is to keep your piece from stretching out. So then we're going to add that to the outer palm. So that is this piece right here. We're going to put it on the right side of that piece. I, ha I have already marked the, the, the wrong side of that piece here. And so we are going to place it exactly opposite that. And we'll find that space with our pins. We're gonna pin it on with the elastic showing. The elastic was stitched to the wrong side of this fabric. The elastic should be showing and it should be pointing up towards the fingers, okay? This is your thumb right here. It'll fold up like that later when you're wearing it, just to orient you a little bit. So we're gonna poke a pin through here so we can find the other edge of our rectangle that we drew. 
Where are you? I'm going to move it just a little bit. Oops, wrong way. There we go. So I like to pin along the shorter edges of that to get it in place. And I'm not much of a pinner, but um, this is one, one spot on these mittens that you really do have to pin. Otherwise, your, your hole is not going to match up in the right spot. OK, so what we're doing here is we're going to draw, basically, while well, we're going to stitch a little box right around the edges of this rectangle. So we're going to start here. Whenever you're making something that is like a, a welt pocket or um, a, a bound buttonhole or something like that, and you want to have this nice turned rectangular edge, you, you, sh you know, our tendency is to want to just start at a corner and go to do to do to do to do. But it's really hard to match up your beginning with your end. So I re definitely recommend starting right in the bottom here and stitching across here like that around and match it and meeting up there where you started. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to move because we're doing this straight stitch here. I'm going to switch my stitch to straight stitch. And before I get to my pin, I'm gonna remove it so I don't hit the pin. I know that sometimes people just sew right over their pins, but I have hit too many pins to want to ever do that. So I always pull them out right as I get to them. And one tip, if you're as you're going around the box, when you're doing the short little seam, if you count how many stitches you did, then you can count the next time you go around. Like here, I did. I did six stitches on the first on the first side. So now I'll do six here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And there's our little tail, and we're going to meet up with that. All right, so there we have, first thing is attaching that finger exit piece to the palm. And then we are going to clip into this box. And we are going to make, we're going to clip right along the center. And then we're going to make like a little Y of clipping right into those two corners. And we're going to try to clip all the way to the corner without clipping the corner. If we clip the corner, that's OK. It happens sometimes, and you just have to go around again. You just need to go back in and put those stitches in again. So this is really helpful if you have a very sharp pair of scissors. I'm using my favorite scissors, my, my Ginger Taylor points here, which I use for everything. All right, so we have clipped that little Y in there. And then you can pull on these just to make sure that you didn't actually clip through your thread because it'll start to unravel. And then you're just going to tuck that in there. Make this nice little rectangular hole, right? And you can, it would be great if you did a little steaming here. So you hold your iron above it. Don't actually touch it, but hold it above it and psh, 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 a little bit of steam. And you can kind of push it down. Move the iron away, of course, so you don't burn yourself. And then just sort of push that down to make that a nice crisp edge there. <clears throat> OK, so then the next step is to take your palms and attach them to the heel of the hand. So one thing I forgot to mention is when you're cutting these pieces out, make sure that you put a safety pin in the right side of your fabric if you can't tell the difference between the right side and the wrong side, because otherwise you might end up sewing, you might make two left mittens by accident. <laughs> that would be a bummer. All right, so we're going to match up. We're going to be doing a seam that goes from here, around, and then over here. So I like to put this the fabric that I am easing on top, so it's a little easier to see what you're doing. So there's our notches. We're matching those up. And we're also put a little pin in over here. 
And this fabric is really forgiving because it's so nice and squishy and wooly. Um, easing things in is very easy with this type of fabric. So because we're stitching the outer layers, the outer layers have a quarter inch seam allowance and the lining layer has three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, they're the same pattern piece, they just have different amounts of seam allowance and that is because your lining has to fit inside of your outer piece. All right, so I sometimes I like to put a little horizontal, I'll, I'll probably be able to see this little notch here, but just in case I can't see it, I'll put a little horizontal pin there just until I get it lined up under my machine, and then I pull it out. All right, and so now I want to switch it to a narrow zigzag. So the reason that I switch it to a narrow zigzag is because, instead of just a regular zigzag, is because the zigzag would create too much bulk. I don't want to have that much bulk. I think that's even a little too wide. Just barely a zigzag, a whisper of a zigzag. <laughs> um, I like to have that little zigging in there just to create just a little bit of stretch, you know, because this fabric is squishy and a little stretchy and it might get a little stress when we're turning it. But you definitely don't want to have a wide zig here because it's going to make a big, thick spot where your seam is. And then when you turn it, it's not going to turn very nicely. Let me just check in here. Let's see, Irada, is that how you say your name? I'm sorry if I butchered it. Hi, I love that idea, awesome. Yes, it is kind of a feel good project. And Lisa says, hi, I'm from Little Shoot, Wisconsin. Oh, I don't know where that is. I mean, I obviously know where Wisconsin is because I live in Minnesota, but. And hello from Beloit, hello. Hello, Jean from Shroffsphere, UK. Cool. And Dawn, hi from Nova Scotia. Hello, Dawn. Hello from Illinois. Oh, let's see. Hello, I have wool fabric. Will that work? Well, you could try it, but the wool, this, the pattern isn't really made for that. It's made to have just a little bit of stretch. If you want to try making this out of a fabric, I would say polar fleece is probably they're going to be the closest in feel to it, although it won't be wool. But you could definitely try, I mean, you could try the wool fabric. I'm assuming it's a woven, um, but maybe it isn't. Maybe it has a little bit of stretch to it. If it does and it's thicker, that might work. Let's see. And, and Anya, she loves this, and she's always wanted to make her own mittens. Awesome. <laughs> Let's see. Zigzag width and stitch length, please. Okay. So I would say the width is like probably about an eighth of an inch and the length is probably about the same maybe a little longer I I have um, I have my length kind of in the middle of my my machine goes from one to four and it's about in the center of that about in the middle of that okay so I've got my heel of my hand attached to the the palm and I'm gonna do the same thing for the lining piece and actually, before I do that, I'm going to clip this. This is the only, when we first trace out all these little boxes, we don't want to actually cut this until um, we put this piece in here for these two pieces, for the, the palm of the hand and for the finger exit. But this is, um, this is just the lining, so we can go ahead and clip this because it'll make it a little easier for us later. We don't want to have to cut that later. So I'm doing the same sort of clipping through the center and making that little Y at the two corners to make it, um, to, to be able to have a rectangle come through there later. All right, so then I'm going to place my lining piece onto my, my, my two lining pieces together. And I'll just pin around, matching my notches. 
and put one little pin here. All right. And because this is my lining, I want to do a little bit more of a, a bigger seam allowance. It should be at three eighths of an inch instead of quarter inch. After you've stitched around those pieces you can clip right here into that corner that'll help everything turn nicely and do the same on this piece too you just want to be really careful you're not clipping your actual seam you can test that by just pulling on it making sure it doesn't come apart and if you have a lot of seam allowance or if you're, I should say, you'll have a three eighths of a seam allowance on the on the lining piece. But if your lining is thick or thickish, then I would trim a little bit off. You know, it just kind of depends on how thick your lining is. I would recommend, um, unless you have a very heavy duty machine, to try and find a thinner sweater for the lining pieces because it'll just make constructing it a lot easier and you don't really need it to be that thick on the inside and the outside. All right, so the next step is to put the back of the hand onto the palm and the heel of the hand. We're gonna do that for both pieces. And I know this is kind of dark, but I'm just pinning, you know, about a quarter, three eighths of an inch away from the edge here on this mitten. And I'm going to um, put a pin just, let's see, let me start from this side. This side is like the pinky side of the mitten. And I'm going to put a pin that goes just above where this seam is here. This is the seam between the palm and the, the heel of the hand. I'm gonna put a pin, we'll put a pin here, and then we'll put a pin here to remind us to stop. Because we are going to leave a little opening in the side of the linings for, um, in, in the side of the lining to be able to turn these mittens right side out later. All right. And we're going to put another pin in here to remind us to stop at this point, too. So you need, depending on the size of your mitten, you're going to need probably like two or three, well, I would say three inches or maybe even a little more um, of space where we're going to stop. Okay, so we're going to stitch from here to the bottom and then we're going to stitch around here, too. So we need to have a little hole in this part, just of the lining one, just of the lining um, part of the mitten. So we're going to start stitching here, 3 eighths inch seam allowance again. And again, on a narrow zig. And I'm going to stop right where the seam is. Stopping right where the seam is where the thumb sticks out. So I stitched along here and stopped at the thumb. And then I'm going to flip the thumb this way and continue on my way. And the reason I'm doing that is because I just don't want the thumb to get stuck in my seam. And it's just, you know, extra layer. There's a lot of layers right there. Um, and if you have felted your 
sweater so that it's very thick, or if you've purchased it already, kind of thick sweater to begin with, you won't be able to get all that under your sewing machine. So it's okay to go nice and slow when you're doing this because you want to make sure that you're easing in your fabric and you don't get any tucks. You don't want to have any little tucks caught in your seam. Okay, I've reached my pin, so I'm going to stop there. And then I'm going to continue. You want to make sure that you, you know, you're starting before you get to that seam from the palm and the and the heel of the hand where they come together. You want to because you don't want to have to sew that together later. We've left a gap here, you can see. So we're gonna use that for turning our, our, mid side, our mitten right side out later. Now we're going to sew the back of the hand on the out, outer layers to the, the palm and heel of the hand. So the exact same thing, except for this time we can go all the way around. I'm just going to pin this just like before. And this time when we go around, we have that extra little finger exit piece. So you have to be careful that you're not going to accidentally catch that. And I'll show you when I put it under the machine what I mean. You just have to fold it out of the way a little bit, which is fine. Okay, so this time we are sewing the outer layers, so we have a quarter of an inch. Still on the same uh, narrow zig. One thing that I noticed as I made a lot of these mittens is for some of them, when you felt them enough, it doesn't actually even really matter what the grain line is anymore. Um, I just wanted to mention that in case you're trying to get a pair of mittens out of a sweater and you felted it enough that you don't have, you don't, you can't really tell the difference between stretching it in any direction. Um, so I would say try, still try to stick with either cutting out your pieces the same way as each other just as an extra precaution, like the backs of the hands, maybe you cut both of the backs of the hands out cross grain, um, and that would be fine. All right, we're, once again, we're gonna stop. Once I get to that area where the thumb is, I'm gonna back tack a little there. And then we're gonna flip the thumb up and then we're going to continue on our way. And if this gets too bulky here to get under your machine, you can always flip your mitten over and stitch from that, from this end and go to there. That would work just fine. 
because I know some machines don't have as high a clearance under the presser foot, so. And it just depends on how thick your sweaters get. All right. our threads all right so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to flip our lining so it's right sides out meaning all of the seam allowances can go to the inside just like that and then we are going to put the lining inside of the outer mitten we're going to slide it into there and what i like to do is i like to just fold this down a little first it seems to make it a little bit easier. And it can be kind of awkward to do this, but I just put my hand inside the mitten and then dress it with the outer mitten. You just need to make sure, let me back up here. You need to make sure that the thumb is directly under this thumb. Don't put it in upside down, otherwise you'll have a palm going to the thumb and it, it'll be a sad day because you're gonna have to rip it out. But it's not the end of the world, right? All right, so I've placed it in there and you're gonna match up your seam, your seam allowances with each other. They should match on the two sides. Leave this folded down because we're gonna add the cuff to this part um, in between these two layers in a minute. So for my cuff, I am doubling my cuff. You don't have to double it. You could just have one layer of a cuff. Like for example, on this mitten, this was just, I cut this off of a sweater cuff and it happened to work perfectly. It's only one layer. So you can just slip that in between the two layers and call it good. Um, but because I'm making this out of a piece of ribbing that I cut out, you know, a piece of the turtleneck, we're going to pick whatever your right side is, and then I'm going to do a little seam allowance here. The guide that I suggested on how wide to cut it, um, the seam allowance that I gave you is about a quarter of an inch for a seam allowance there. So I'm just going to stitch right along that edge, quarter inch away. And if you're newer to sewing, you should probably pin that. <laughs> but I find that this sweatery fabric is, you know, it has some stickiness to it because it's fuzzy, so it doesn't slide around too much. It's a really nice project. Um, it's a really nice fabric to use for uh, newer sewers. So. I have my seam allowance here and I'm going to double my cuff. So I'm just going to fold it like this. And I'm, I could stitch them together, but I'm just going to stitch them together when I add it into the mitten. If you're newer at sewing, I would, I would take the extra step and just zigzag them together about a quarter inch away from the edge. Or here's another tip. If you are using a thicker ribbing, if, if what your sweater had was um, something a little thicker. This is very thin fabric, so I can easily double this and get everything into the seam. If it's thicker, scoot this down just a little bit and do a zigzag on and off the edge of the lower piece of fabric right here. So you'll do, you'll zigzag like this. And then when you put this into the bottom of the mitten, into the cuff, you'll see that later, um, you will stitch right next to it. So you're not actually sewing through two layers, you're just sewing through one layer right next to that zigging. So there's another little tip, but mine is so thin, I'm just gonna add it right into the mitten as is. All right, so I turned it so my seam allowances are in the, on the inside there. And then I'm going to slip this in between the two layers of my mitten. Now, you know, it may, you may have the thought, oh, well, let's line up all the seams, but then you have all this extra bulk there. So I would definitely recommend putting your seam for the cuff, centering it on the underside of the mitten and d not putting it on either side where the other seams are. So you're gonna wanna slide this on and whatever kind of cuff you make, you wanna make sure that the right side of the cuff, the side that you wanna see when you, when you look at your mitten like this, this side right here, this, surface is going to be what you see here. It's going to be touching the right side of this mitten here. So I know it's a little confusing because my piece has <laughs> both sides are the right side, really, the inside and the outside. 
So this part is probably the most awkward part. You have to just sort of get them all lined up in the right spot. And I stretch this a little and sort of wiggle it a little just to make sure that it's evenly distributed. Oh, we have Dawn says, hi from Nova Scotia. My parents went to Nova Scotia and the photos that I saw were just amazing and I definitely want to go there. And I actually have wanted to go there ever since I watched um, the PBS special of Anne with an E. Um, yes, Nova Scotia. Hello from Illinois. Hello from Illinois. Let's see. And what else? We... Oh. It, Eleanor says she loves this and she's really looking forward to more videos. Awesome. So Eleanor or anyone else, if you have suggestions on videos you would like to see, definitely put that in the chat box too because I would love to know what you guys are interested in. Would fleece work for the lining? Sue, that is a very good question. Yes, um, you could definitely use fleece for the lining. I particularly like lining, if I'm making a wool mitten on the outside, I like to line it with wool too because I really like the extra benefit Maybe I should show you this before. I, I like the extra benefit of the wool instead of um, the synthetic. You know, if you if your hands, you know, say you're out sledding with your kids and you're working up a sweat inside there, your your sweat will kind of absorb into the wool and um, it's antimicrobial, so they won't stink as much as <laughs> as a as a fleece would. But also, um, it keeps you warmer when wool gets wet. But I'm not saying. I mean, you can definitely use fleece for the lining, and especially if you felt some sweaters up and they're um, thicker, find like a thinner fleece to use for the lining. All right, so I've got all my layers here. I have my lining layer. And I have both layers of my cuff. Maybe you'll only have one layer of your cuff, just depending on how you do your ribbed cuff. And then I have my outside layer. And I'm going to pin all of them together um, from the inside here. And you just want to make sure you are matching up. Oops, I did not do that. You want to make sure you are matching up the seams or slightly staggering them. If you have a really thick fabric, you can slightly stagger your seams here between your lining fabric and your outer fabric. That's okay. The mitten police is not gonna come after you if they're just a tiny bit twisted there. It's not gonna show. All right, so I'm getting these pinned up and then then the magic is going to happen after I sew this. <laughs> That's the most exciting part. All right. So I have my pins on the inside, and I'm going to continue with my narrow zig. Start on a point that is not this bulk of seam. You're going to start somewhere where the seam isn't, maybe on the, on the back of the hand. or um, That's probably the best place to start because there's no seams there. And you're going to do a, half, or a, a quarter inch seam allowance. Make sure that if you're doing what I did and you didn't stitch your two, the two edges of that ribbing together, just make sure that you really do have all of your layers. And this is the part where you can, it's okay to take your time. I mean, really, it's okay to take your time anytime, but I'm just emphasizing it for this because it is kind of bulky and it's a little awkward. Because you, you, you know, you just need to go a little bit at a time. And if you come to a really bulky seam, it is absolutely okay to just turn the wheel manually with your own hand and not plow through it if you're worried that it's going to be a little much. Thank you. 
So I've made it all the way around. And if you have a lot of bulk here, you can trim a little away. Don't worry too much if it's not the most perfect seam ever, because it really, like I said before, this fabric is so forgiving. All right, here comes the magic part, guys. So we reach into the mitten, and you're just gonna pull your lining out, and you have this crazy two-handed mitten contraption, and you're thinking, Brenda, what did we make? This is crazy. All right, and then you're just gonna, remember that opening we left? We're gonna flip our mitten inside out. Well, really right side out. That's the lining, and we just keep going, stuffing that mitten inside there. And at some point it might get hard to stuff it in there, so you can reach from this side, and if you have a cuff, you can pull on that. Just like that. And then you're gonna pop this mitten all the way inside. Just make sure it's not twisted around. I don't think that you could really get it twisted in a full revolution, but um, just take a look, make sure, here's your little finger exit piece and your hole. That needs to be on the same side as this hole. So you're just gonna tuck it in there. And you're gonna pull your finger exit all the way through your lining, like that. Okay, and then here's my finger, it's inside out. I'm gonna tuck my finger down to get it out of the way. Or, not finger, it's a thumb. <laughs> I'm gonna tuck the thumb down just to move it out of the way and get rid of some of the bulk. You can reach in here too and just sort of smooth things out a little bit. You don't want anything to get caught in the seam. So, what you're gonna do is you're going to, you can give this a little press if you want to, um, and then you're going to fold this piece down. So what you'll see is, you'll see the elastic once again. We're gonna pin that. We're pinning it just to the lining. Try really hard not to get it pinned to the outer piece, which is inside of the lining right now. If you need to, you can take a piece, I mean, you can put your hand in there and see if you've pinned it um, accidentally. But um, you can also put a piece of paper in between your layers if you're worried about accidentally catching it um, with your needle and thread. Because we are going to hand sew a little part of this. All right, so I like to start at the top. Let's see, I'm gonna move this just a little bit. Looks like we're pulling on that. Hole was getting stretched out a little bit. The hole in the lining, I didn't like that, so. All right, so we're gonna start by stitching across here and down around the edge, then we're gonna stitch along this part of the finger exit and back up. And we're just stitching, right here we're gonna be stitching to the seam allowance. But then as we go around here, these areas, we are only stitching it to the lining of the mitten. Okay, so we're gonna start right here. We'll just start there and then we can tuck our, our thread ends in and we're just doing a whip stitch. And this does not need to be, you know, state fair quality work here. It needs to be sturdy. So use a thicker thread, maybe a button thread or something. Something very sturdy, use your thread doubled up and you know it doesn't nobody's going to be looking inside your mittens it just needs to to hold things in place all right so now we have switched from sewing to the seam allowance to just catching that lining just catching the lining and you can put your fingers inside here from the from that little opening that we left. So you can feel when your needle is in between those two layers, so you're not accidentally catching the outer fabric. And when you get to the corner here, definitely stitch through that elastic a couple of times. 
the whole reason this elastic is here is because your finger is going to be going in and out and in and out of this little finger exit with all the texting that we all do. <laughs> and it's going to be putting some stress on that fabric. So I wanted to give it a way to bounce back into shape and to not be distorted and um, rip out. So do at least a cup, two or three or even more if you want extra credit stitches through that elastic because that's going to help anchor it. That's where the stress point really is. And this part just needs to be, you know, your stitches just need to be close enough. I know that's really hard to see on this video, but um, your stitches need to be just close enough that you can't accidentally get your finger through there by accident, you know, probably like a quarter of an inch or so um, would be fine. And again, we're, tr you know, my fingers are inside of this making sure that I am not accidentally catching the, the outer mitten that's hiding in there right now. Okay, we made it to the other end of the elastic, same thing. We wanna go through that at least a couple of times. And then we're gonna go back up. And Eleanor says, I am a beginner. I really need more videos like this. Awesome, Eleanor. Well, I hopefully will be back doing these. I really enjoy teaching. This is something that's a little newer in my life. I've spent the last over 20 years working um, in a costume shop. So there isn't, right now because of COVID, there just isn't that much work for that type of that type of work for me anymore and so I've switched over to doing more teaching which has been super fun I've always enjoyed teaching people um, about all the things that I love to do and talk about incessantly sewing and crocheting and all kinds of crafty things all right so I made it around to the where I started I even went a little bit extra just to go over my stitches again and I'm just going to knot it off here And then I'll just tuck my ends in, just putting my needle into that thickness there of the seam allowance so that I can clip it and it won't be in the way. There'll be a little bit of extra yarn, uh, extra tail there. All right, so here we have our finger exit piece is all anchored. And then the last step we need to do is we're gonna fold these pieces in towards themselves like that. And we're going to, you can do this, um, you can certainly do this last seam part right here, you can certainly do that with hand sewing uh, if you're more comfortable with that, because it can be a little bit tricky, um, especially if your mitten lining is pretty thick. Mine is a little thick, but this, this will be fine for me to do. Um, I'm just going to zigzag with my sewing machine where I zig on and then off and then on and then off and then on and then off. The, the reason I'm going off is so that it won't create quite such a bulky little lump there. So, oh, and I should also mention, <laughs> I have used my finger or do, you know, before you put this together, you should use your finger to shove that mitten, the outer mitten, which is hiding inside here, shove it over to the side because you do not want to accidentally catch that. See, I can pinch this right here and know that my mitten, my outer mitten is over here and this is only my lining mitten. So I'm just going to do a zigzag. I'm going to make it a little wider because... I, I want to be able to catch that edge. So kind of mid width there. And you know, you're sewing through four layers of fabric right there. So it, it is kind of thick, but if you go slow, you'll be fine. Make sure I caught everything. I 
looks good. So I've zigged this all closed here. And now you can reach into the mitten, or if you're making a smaller pair of these mittens, <laughs> you might have to have a kid reach in there. Um, or you can just start pushing a dowel on this end to try and push it in from this side. And you can grab the end of the, the, the finger of the mitten here and pull it out. And then this part does take a little finessing because it's gonna be lumpy and a little weird, so don't be freaked out when you first turn it. Um, you'll need to put your, you'll need to pull the thumb out and then you'll need to place the lining thumb inside of this thumb. So you just need to kind of mush it around until it gets into the right spot and then I like to just put my hand in here and let's see, I'm trying to get my thumb as squished down. There we go. So push your, right now I have two fingers inside of the lining of the thumb and I'm pushing it up inside of that outer thumb to kind of get it into the right place and kind of moving this around a little to try and get your lining to be in the right spot. All right, so now we have a mate for our other mitt and we have a nice little texting spot too. So it's easy, the, the part of the inspiration behind these mitts is, you know, out of necessity because I was outside a lot this winter and I have those nice flip top mittens where you can just flip, you know, flip it open, but then you have to use your other hand to flip it open. And I just want, I just wanted to be able to just pop my finger in and out, you know, without using my other hand and just have one finger out. So like my whole, all of my fingers weren't getting cold. Just one of them was <laughs> a little bit. So um, I hope that you guys uh, enjoy making this project. And if you do complete this project, please post pictures on social media because I would absolutely love to see what you did. Let me just double check over here and see if there's anything new. Okay, I think I answered all of the questions. So yeah, please definitely post your pictures. I would love to see them. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed teaching you guys.